Hi guys, nice to see you all. Uh, a couple of days after Newcastle's 5-1 demolition of uh, Aston Villa on day one of the Premier League season. As you can see, I'm at the Newcastle United training ground this morning uh, where I've got uh, a couple of live hits um, looking back at Saturday's game um, and also watching a bit of the training session as well. We'll do a live into Sky Sports News soon so it'll be a chance to see the likes of uh, Sandro Tonali, Harvey Barnes and of course Tino Livramento who have, uh, of course are all new signings. Um, I wonder, I'm wondering whether uh, Sandro Tonali, uh, his stomach is still okay after last night's visit to, uh, <laughs> to Weatherspoons in Gosford. I have had it uh, stood up from my sources that he was indeed in there last night. A table was booked at 7.45 for Sandro Tonali. Um, whether it was him that did that, I would very much doubt, but it has uh, the hallmarks of a, a prank probably from one or two of his teammates. So um be interesting to see Sandro Tonali today and to uh, see if, uh, if he's moving okay following last night. Um, and just a chance to have a little mood, a look at the mood around the place and see how everyone is uh, feeling after that unbelievable opening day win against Aston Villa on Saturday. Where, you know, I think many people thought it would have been a tough day for Newcastle United. People were predicting a draw, maybe even just a narrow win. But to win so comprehensively, I think it's just made a lot of people realise that Newcastle are the team that ended last season and that the Newcastle United fans should have a, a good season. Uh, ahead of them, one that they can uh, enjoy watching their team and one that they can be challenging again at the top of the, t the table uh, once more. So I'm going to pop in just now, uh, inside just now, uh, do a couple of live, live hits uh, and watch a bit of training. So that was just a couple of little bits of training that I filmed today in the, in the warm-up. Uh, the players then went in to do some more tactical stuff afterwards, but we're not allowed to film that on Sky Sports News um, due to the fact that the club obviously want to keep these things understandably uh, to themselves and keep it secret, and like they did from Aston Villa at the weekend and really caught Aston Villa out with the, the way they set the team up, the way Tenali came in and played. Not many people would have expected that and just the way they generally dominated the, the game. So got a little bit of the warm up this morning. As you can see, it looked fairly lighthearted. Everyone was chilled. Um, quick hello with one or two of the players who um, are obviously in high spirits following the, the start to the season. But with, of course, what they know is a really, really difficult trip to Manchester City this weekend. Not ideal, it's eight o'clock on a Saturday night, I don't think. I think the players would have rather played earlier on in the day. But with Man City playing on Tuesday night in the Super Cup against Sevilla, it means the kickoff has been knocked back a little bit. So, um, but listen, if they're ever going to go there in better form, this is the this is the time to go there after that after that unbelievable performance against Aston Villa. They'll go there full of confidence, and perhaps it is a good time to get Manchester City uh, this weekend on the back of of that that thumping over Villa at the weekend. Had they lost at the weekend, it would have been a tough assignment. But they're going to go there brimming with confidence, and they, as you can imagine, the players are probably just desperate for the match to come around. Where are we? We're on Tuesday right now. Still the best part of the week to come, but. Um, the mood around the place, certainly from what I saw this morning in, in the hour or so that I was in there, it was very high and uh, the players are in fine fettle. Just one thing was uh, Fabian Schaar was training away from the group. Um, he of course played on Saturday, he's had that um, injury over the, the summer but he managed to play. He did train on his own but he did look like to be running freely. There was no Joe Willock again this morning um, but most of those who were involved on Saturday will look like they were getting put through a, a full session today. Didn't look to be anyone missing that I noticed anyway um, but sometimes hard in those situations. Um, in terms of transfer news, um, 
I know there's been a couple of reports elsewhere that Newcastle are looking for a defender. I've been saying to anyone who would listen over the weekend that it's a left back rather than a centre back that Newcastle are looking for. Um, I mentioned Kieran Tierney in our reporting yesterday. It's a player Newcastle have wanted for, for some time. There's been contact between all parties throughout the summer. And I think there is a want from Tierney's side to, to make the move here should Newcastle agree something with Arsenal. I think it's going to be difficult though because Arsenal will want to um, they would want to get a fee in for the player now Newcastle as we know don't have the money to spend Eddie Howe said that last week they have to be creative they have to look to loans and structured deals so I think if Newcastle were to get him it would have to be a, a loan agreement with a, a either a, an obligation or option to make it permanent next summer that will be difficult because New Arsenal if they were going to sell would rather have the money now so it's the sort of deal I think that could go on until the end of the transfer window and Newcastle may be able to snap him up or another player in the dying embers of the, the transfer window. Of course, Lewis Hall uh, is one that's been mentioned. He's 18 years old. Is he ready to come in and play from the start? I'm not so sure. I think what Newcastle would want is they want a left-back to come in and start and then ideally allow Dan Byrne to go in and compete for centre-back. So that's why I think uh, Tierney would be more uh, of a... Um, an option I think than, than maybe Lewis Hall Cucurella as well is one that's been mentioned at, at Chelsea but if Cucurella was to come out of Chelsea and Lewis Hall were to leave it would leave them only one left back in the shape of Ben Chilwell so not really too sure on that one but look I think it's clearly a player that Eddie Howe uh, likes for me Tierney would be the best option we will wait and see what hap happens but um, having spoken to a few people involved in the talks yesterday um, I feel that it's one that potentially could accelerate to end of the window but a lot of things need to fall into place uh, Newcastle, Arsenal and of course the player have to be happy with the deal and Tierney has other options on the table so let's see what happens but Eddie Howe said he wants to bring one more in generally when he says he wants a player in it's worked for him so far so I think he will sign one more player I'm not ruling out a centre-back, I just think it's more likely to be a left-back because I think that in turn would allow Dan Byrne to move into central defence um, and compete with Sven Botman, Fabian Schaar and Jamal, Jamal Lascelles in there. So let's see what happens. I don't see anything happening imminently. I think it'll probably be towards the end of the transfer window. But Newcastle still active, Eddie Howe still looking for one more player to add to that squad. Of course, it'd be Aston Villa 5-1 on Saturday. So anyway, that's all from me just now. I'm heading off at another job now. Um, feel free to subscribe, comment below, reading all the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll try and keep these up. Speak soon. Cheers, guys.